Hey folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. So, uh, man, it's been a great year for honey. This is the uh, best harvest we've ever had. So we've got uh, 17 honey supers and I've got two deep boxes. Uh, so I ran out of honey supers during the uh, flow. And because I was putting uh, two supers on some of my hives and, and a couple of them had actually had three. But uh, the ones that had three, uh, one of them drew out two and about three quarters. So one of these supers is only about three quarters full. But, uh, and the rest of these are very full and these deeps are pretty full as well. So uh, it's gonna be a lot of honey. So uh, I've always done uh, some extraction videos in the past and uh, I would be this big long drawn out thing in a time lapse. So. I'm going to focus more this year on the equipment and some issues I had last year and I'll talk about that a little bit. So uh, let's get on inside our new honey house or our new little workshop in here. It's not new. It, uh, it's uh, So this is, uh, we're inside the big red barn that you might have seen in some of the videos. And uh, on this one third of the barn, there's a 600 square foot apartment. And uh, we lived in there for five years. Uh, paying our debt down and uh, so we could build our new house. So our new house is done. We're moved in and we got just about everything out of this apartment and moved out and uh, just cleaning it up a little bit. And uh, it's going to be a really nice place for us to do things like in the summertime when it's so hot outside you, you can't hardly do much. It's a nice uh, air conditioned workspace. So. Uh, wife's going to be doing some uh, refinishing some uh, tables and chairs for the new house and she's going to try and do that in there if the fumes don't get too bad but uh, let's go on in here and uh, i'll show you the equipment what we got going on and uh, get started okay here's what our apartment looks like uh, so it's got uh, just about all the comforts of home you would want and uh, they're all close together <laughs> so we've got a uh, Full kitchen over here, little double oven microwave, and uh, big countertop spaces. Got this island here. I built this out of, it's actually two cabinets uh, put together, and I put it on casters so we can move that island around wherever we need to. And so we got us a nice big sink in here to clean stuff with, and another microwave. And uh, we're going to keep this refrigerator down here going, and I'm going to shut down ones out in the garage. Uh, out in the garage, we have two fridges out there. One's running, the other's just on standby. And uh, we have a upright freezer we're going to move up to the house. So uh, we'll move a little bit of stuff in here, and that way we'll always have fresh water and ice down here as well. So the bedroom's over here, and the bathroom's over there, and uh, we're working on that. Left the love seat down here so we'd have a place to sit. And this little cabinet right here. Okay, so let's talk about our equipment. Okay, first off, the extractor. I have a electric powered extractor. And uh, I believe I got this from Brushy Mountain and they're no longer in business. And I have not seen this extractor on the market uh, I did see one I thought looked just like it, but it had a red motor. So this motor's made in Germany. It's even got German uh, writing on it. And uh, it has a nice uh, motor controller here. So uh, you can do it forward and reverse, whatever speed you want. And it has safety switches here, so you can't when you open it up, it'll shut the motor off and it won't start with that op open either. So, uh, so it goes in forward and reverse. So uh, this extractor is what's called a radial extractor. And if you're in the market for an extractor, I highly recommend a radial extractor. And uh, here's what that means, and here's why I recommend it. Okay, this extractor will hold nine medium frames, and they go in this way. And you don't have to flip the frames. A tangential extractor, 
you put the frames in like this, the honey goes out of one side, then you got to flip it and spin it again. So this extractor will do deep frames in that way. And I use this, these inserts here to do the deeps. So it's a tangential extractor for deeps and it'll only do three deeps at a time. And uh, it'll do nine medium honey super frames at a time. So I don't really like harvesting deep frames because it really bottlenecks and slows down the uh, extraction process. So that's the extractor. It uh, rides on a ball bearing down there. So uh, always check your extractor down there before you use it every year and make sure you grease that uh, with food grade grease. So uh, the honey never gets in this area. It flings out on the walls and goes down the sides and then it'll come out the honey gate here. So the honey never gets up around that grease. Uh, if it does, uh, if you've done something wrong, you're running it with the gate closed or something like that. So when we pull our honey out of the extractor, I filter it through this two-stage filter. So there's the coarse, and here's the fine. And you can get these. Uh, I got this one, I think, on Amazon uh, from a beekeeping house that was selling on there. I think there's a link to this in the, the descriptions below, so check that out. Pretty sure there is. I think they're about $16 or $17. But if you don't have one of these, you can use, uh, some people use like a five gallon bucket paint filter and do that, and that works too. So, we start here on our uncapping station. Put the frame here on this little screw, holds it down. I use a hot knife. Cappings fall down in here. You load your frames in the extractor, spin them, honey comes out into the bucket. So let's talk about buckets. Last year I had an incident where a bucket split open on me and I had probably a gallon of honey just go out right here before I could contain it. And uh, it's kind of funny, my wife, I was like, I was like dumping it, gonna dump it out. And uh, she's like, stop, what are you doing? So she got these spatulas and she spatulated it up and put it in some jars and put X's on them. So we've been eating honey uh, out of jars with X's on them. Uh, we didn't sell any of those, but she's like, I'll eat it. But, uh, anyway, that was kind of funny. So those buckets came from Lowe's that split. And that's what they looked like. And uh, it's just a normal white bucket. So here's the lowdown on these buckets. So from Lowe's, it was a Letica Rochester, Michigan bucket. So what's key to note on these buckets is right here, 68 mil. That's the thickness. So that bucket split right across here. And I had nine of these full out in the garage and three more formed cracks while they were stacked on top of each other. So we had us a mess and we caught those before uh, it got very bad. So I still have this one here. This is what I use for my bottle filler. And uh, I have a video where I show how I made this and a link to where to uh, purchase this little valve. And it comes with a, a washer. And uh, you use a uh, PVC fitting right there to screw on the back to hold it on. So not much to it. So over here's where we'll do the bottling when we're ready to do that. So I got new buckets this year. I found them on Amazon and I did a search heavy duty food grade uh, buckets, five gallon. And 
these are 90 mil versus that other one that said it was 68. So they're a lot thicker. And uh, it's made by Berry Plastics. And there's their phone number. But uh, I bought these on Amazon, and it's got the uh, two, the HPDE, so that's the food grade. So you can tell just by feeling them, they're a lot more solid. They don't flex uh, like that other one does. It's really a solid bucket. And I bought them in a boxes of six, and they were pretty reasonably priced. So I'll put a link to those down below. Uh, you can check those out. Uh, I bought them prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, so there's no telling what they cost now. But it uh, seems like they were $70, $80 for six, and I bought uh, two boxes of them, so I have 12 of these. And uh, they're good quality stuff. Okay, that is uh, basically it. Uh, here's our labels. So to sell at a farmer's market or legally sell in Oklahoma, with farmer's market rules, you know, hand-to-hand, -hand, hey, face-to-face -face business transaction for a small farm, you have to have your name, address, and phone number on those. So uh, let's get started. I'll uh, sh show you a little bit of the process and how it goes. And uh, this is probably going to take two days uh, to get all this done. So let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna start with the deeps first and get them out of the way. Man, that is heavy. Okay, we spaced our frames with the nine each in here. So the bees would draw the frames out a little wider. So when we go to cut off with our hot knife, it's sticking out a little better and it'll come off. But some of these still look pretty narrow, but uh, we'll see how it goes. And you'll always want a screwdriver or something to pop these out. And I know I need to get a, a scraper and clean this off the top here. But uh, I'll go ahead and start with this one here on the outside. So you see it's not capped along the bottom here. So we need to shake it and test it. So none came out, means it's good to go. Uh, they just didn't get this capped off towards the end of the flow. This side here looks really good. And uh, it's not capped along here on the bottom right there either. Smells good. All right. A couple little spots right here. So this side's a little more uh, recessed and it's not getting at all. And I'll show you how to do a capping scratcher how I do it okay so this is your capping scratcher so you don't literally scratch with it I see a lot of people taking it and just going like this and just destroying the comb I like to reuse my comb so what I do and I've seen other people do this you flip it over to where you're kind of doing it underhanded and you run it underneath the caps and just pull them off like that and that way your comb underneath that cap stays intact it doesn't scratch it all up and tear it up so next year when the bees go to reuse this it's in a lot better shape a lot less repairs to do 
course, these are deep frames and they're going to go back uh, probably onto some of my single deep hives. So in the springtime or the summer harvest from the spring flow, I haven't been putting my frames out to clean up as an open feed. I put them back on the hives. Let the bees clean them up on top of their hive. A lot less mayhem, a lot fewer uh, deaths of bees fighting and wasps and all of that getting into the mix. Uh, plus you don't have to go back out and get them and put them up uh, a second time. So you just handle them once. So this honey's pretty runny. It's been out in the garage. It's been in the uh, mid 90s all week. And uh, it is one hot one. It's been hot and humid here in central Oklahoma. Okay, we'll get this in the extractor. So our cappings go down in here and they drip the honey through this screen into this secondary container down here and then when we're all done we'll drain it out the honey gate there and you want to let these sit uh, at least overnight stir them up because a lot of honey will come out of this even when you're after you're done quite a few hours later and you want to keep it as warm as possible too okay so you can see how we load these deeps uh, tangential. So we can only do three at a time in this extractor, but once we go to the mediums, we'll load them in. There'll be three here, three there, and three there, and we could do nine at a time, to speed things way up. And what's slow about this, after you're done, you can only do one side at a time. You gotta flip them, so it takes two spins to do a deep. Okay, we uh, got one bucket full. I'm not filling them all the way as full this year just because of the splitting incident I had last year, even though these are heavier duty buckets. So uh, I checked the tear weight and it's uh, 2.6 pounds. And I'm gonna weigh each uh, bucket as we, we come out. So uh, we can keep track of how many pounds we've got. Bucket number one, 49.2 pounds.
Okay, we're finishing up. We got the last run going. So we wound up with uh, 13 buckets so far and they average around 50 pounds ish. So uh, I had to use one of the tractor supply buckets and we'll probably use another one that were backups. So I had these from last year when my Lowe's bucket started blowing out. So uh, these are BPA free, they're uh, food grade. So, uh, and I got one left here, so we'll use this one. Uh, the capping's tank is full. I've never had it this full, so it's going to take probably a week for this to all settle out, and uh, I'll have to stir it and uh, just keep working it. So. I don't have any of that nuclear powered stainless steel machinery like like Mr. Red ha has. You seen that uh, wax separator th machine he has? Oh my gosh. That is something else. Wish I had that. So, uh, but he's got a, a lot, lot bigger operation. Yeah, and Mr. Red's running deeps. And I tell you what, after I hauled in the I don't know, 15th, 16th, one of these in here. I was dying, just the mediums. I can't imagine doing all deeps. That is one tough little man, Mr. Red is. So uh, come out here and I'll show you where we've got them stacked up. Get the light on. So I'm only stacking them uh, too high just to prevent cracking of the, the buckets these are the heavy duty buckets got six here and I've got six here so that's all 12 of my new buckets so it's uh almost 10 o'clock Sunday night 9 30 ish man I be been doing this two days straight after two days of harvesting out in the heat man uh, harvesting honey and extracting is hard work and uh, lots of motrin man my back is killing me but, uh, it's been a good year really thankful for our harvest and uh, I will finish this up in the house so you can see uh, I'll tally up the total pounds so you can see it and we're doing the last bucket here on our one with the spigot to fill and uh so there's going to be probably 20 pounds in here more and these cappings man i don't know this is very heavy i can't hard i can't even lift it uh, that that's got to weigh 110 pounds 120 pounds but uh I bet a half of that is honey in there and it's just got to work its way down. So uh, we'll finish this up in my office and uh, I'll see if I can pull this up on my computer and uh, tally up the, the total weight. So here's the honey weight that came in. So we had 15 buckets and here's the weights, uh, the gross weight that I weighed on the scales and I took the uh, 2.2 pound tear weight off and it's five gallons so the 15th bucket was the cappings tank and I did three different uh, pulls off of that and the third one got us up to 52.2 uh, pounds which put that capping tank at an even 50 pounds of honey so what does that come to so the total was 743 pounds and the net weight taken out the buckets was 710 pounds even and if you calculate the weight of that in gallons 11 pounds per gallon that was uh, 64 and a half gallons and uh, last year i had 462 pounds uh, for a 248 pound increase 53.7% increase over last year's harvest, which I was really surprised we did so well. Uh, with a lot of rain in the, in the early stages and things, it looked like they weren't putting honey in. And then it's like one week, man, it just slammed. 
uh, and they filled it up fast. I was scrambling for honey boxes and supers. Uh, so I harvested 20.6 supers. So how I came up with that was I had 18 supers and two deeps. I calculated the deeps as 1.3 uh, supers, so that was 20.6. So an average weight for super, 34 and a half pounds, and that's a 3.1 gallons per super. And uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Y'all take care.